Okay, let's go. Oh, nice. It's only 12 minutes. It's a little concerned to start one. Oh, didn't know if I had time. It plays. So. I oh, just took a shower. That was good. Whew. I guess I'll refresh. I don't think my internet's having an Okay. Internet's fine, presumably. It's time. There we go. So, Malcolm Bendel, we're here to. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <It's our 15 laughs> section. PowerPoint and uh, video presentation on the creation of uh, plasmoids and MSAT plasmoids, their charging and discharging, and their function, uh, and their functions being and their natures being adapted under the basis of you know observe and copy nature to actually enhance the power and the, the eradicate the pollution from our explosive devices until such time as we can actually move on with a planetary power plant that supplies energy through you know, resonance from the Schumann cavity and uh, tuned aerials and electric motors from that resonance. So, so basically, uh, we'll go on to the first slide. So, it's the Vaso Plosive Energy Revolution of the Thunderstorm Generator. So basically, the Thunderstorm Generator simply is using the pressure and vacuum and the heat, a waste heat, from internal combustion engine. This is, answers a question most people ask about this technology in relation to an internal combustion engine. No, it is not free energy device. No, it is not perpetual motion. No, it is simply the fact that most people don't know that when they go to the fuel pump, they pay they buy three dollars worth of petrol, one dollar goes to driving the car, <coughs> and the other two dollars are your contribution to destroying the atmosphere. He said it waste heat, but he also said it converts the emissions. So with our technology, you'll go to So like in one realm it's dealing with its focus is heat. In another realm its focus is chemical is not just something to casually say it does both of them, I guess is my point. The fuel pump, two dollars will be going to drive in the car and the other dollar will redeem your previous two dollars that you spent on destroying the atmosphere by replenishing the atmosphere with oxygen and not supplying any more CO2, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide CO, which is poisonous, hydrocarbons, which are also toxic and poisonous, and heat, which also is a pollutant in the major cities of the world. So this is just a, uh, I'll read this for good measure. Australian Malcolm Bendel has invented a proprietary MSAT plasmoid induced and controlled atomic energy release process from protein, which is hydrogen here, which allows water to be used as an atomic fuel. So just to clarify that, the waste energy from your motor that you've already paid. It doesn't say I, which kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, where it's almost like these slides are written by someone else. Very strange. I don't know what to make about that. To produce. That is the, the $2 that heats up the atmosphere and pollutes it. Well, we, we're taking $1 of that, recovering it. Except for that, I guess, within a large group of people that makes some sense to just kind of divvy out the work but when presenting one's own work like it shouldn't be divvied out to someone else it's waste energy so it's only recovering 50 percent 
of the waste energy, but that 50% is 100% of the current energy of a motor. A very simple concept. So uh, using this novel technology, conventional energy generators can be retrofitted to run on a combination of water in its gas phase, and it's very important, in its gas phase, not water, uh, vapour, like as you know, particular droplets of water or cloud, this is actually in its gas phase, which means that, it will, that uh, even at minus 85 degrees Celsius, it will remain in its gas phase because of the strong vacuum. So when deployed as a retrofit of an engine... Uh, what? It doesn't really make sense, especially saying it's going to be at this low temperature that has steam. You know, vacuum? Okay. The Bendel engine, this innovation is known as the thunderstorm generator. Using this novel technology, Conventional engines and generators can be retrofitted to run on a combination of water in its gas phase and fossil fuels, producing negligible toxic emissions when compared to current outputs. Existing hydrocarbon fossil fuels, petrol, kerosene, diesel and gas, are solely used to achieve the initial operating temperature and vacuum. This is required to begin the creation, capture and harvesting of the stored atomic fusion energy contained within the water. Uh, which goes back to the beginning of the slide presentation. You'll remember in, in section number one, where we had a, uh, the beautiful graphic, thanks to how to, the, of the water, a glass full of water being enough, as Albert Einstein said, there's enough energy in a glass oh full God. of water to boil all the oceans of the world. So basically that Simple observation is just uh, you know put into practical use here, and so. I mean, if that's the case, then his practical use should only really take like a drop of water, such a minuscule amount of water. That it seems almost impossible to really control that minuscule amount of water. Basically, and the temperature vacuum that the engine's created, the vacuum is obviously pressure and vacuum from the piston uh, that actually pushes up, creates pressure, pulls back, creates a vacuum in equal proportion. So this required to be the creation, capture and harvesting of stored atomic fusion energy contained within the water, only better or less invented proprietary NSAT plasmoid induced atomic fusion process which allows water to be used as the atomic fuel. So basically, it means that we are actually using collapsing bubbles in the water, as in section one where we show the star in the jar, in that uh, collapsing bubble with the catalytic effect. And a catalyst simply means that you can have, you can create effects at lower pressures and temperatures than normal. And in this, in this case, instead of ne needing the pressures and temperatures of the sun, you know, the huge amounts there, you can recreate that in a imploding, imploding bubble, but once you produce a plasmoid, then you can amplify that effect uh, or initiate the effect of creating a plasmoid and augment its effect on other... I feel like I heard in the past, like looking up to the right versus looking up to the left. Let's see, body language. Looking up to right. Tend to look to the right when we are imagining things, but towards the left when we are remembering. Looking to the right and downwards suggests self-doubt, while looking to the right and up indicates that a person is telling untruths. Remin looking to the left, I mean, this is 
This is just standard what people say, and I mean, I've noticed it. Okay, here's this one. Here's someone denying it. Obviously, it's not 100% of the time. There, you can recreate that in a imploding, imploding bubble. Recreate a sun in an imploding bubble. Then you can amplify that, and then you can amplify the plasmoid once it's there. Effect, uh, or you initiate the effect of creating a plasmoid, and up to the right, initiate the effect of creating a plasmoid. Initiate versus amplify. I guess they could be synonyms enough. If it's like a subtle, like a energy that's present that is amplified, but it's subtle, is almost like the same as just initiating. Okay, let's carry on. It's effect on other matter and other energy energies so because that plasmoid is basically a catalyst in its own right it view it as an atomic battery battery but also as an atomic catalyst which can facilitate the transmutation of matter or as i'd like to say the reconstruction of matter by uh, using the zero point to uh, with there is no frequency to dismantle the matter to pure energy, and then use that, store that, that energy in the plasmoid through its uh, own self-generated containment field. So basically the next one. So explosive versus implosive technology, I've mentioned this on and off, but this is sort of to emphasize it, that um, Again, that the thing is that explosive technology is a positive charge, which is death and destruction, and implosion is a negative charge, which is the constructive life force. So therefore, by using implosion, you're enacting and activating constructive life force with no pollution and no friction. And over here, what we have been doing is death and destruction, where that uh, the faster you go, the higher the friction is. there is. It's explosive, it's uh, dissipating, it's very wasteful. That's why you lose, by the very nature of it, you lose, you can only use you know, a third of its power. Like, uh, you know, not only is your car only 34% energy efficient, but even worse, you've got the fact that you've got uh, using coal to generate Electricity. That's really not a universal number to be just constantly saying it. Like, it depends on the engine. And that's only 34% energy efficient. So again, part of our technology is we use that on chimneys, which you'll see in the latest sections. But here we have Bendel's proprietary device when attached to an internal combustion engine generates energy from a combination of water and gas phase, HHO, uh, plasma, preconditioned water. The orig original fossil fuel, the motor's vacuum, and the recovered exhaust gases. Using current combustion engine technology, 66% of all hydrocarbon fuel is wasted in part as heat and shockwave, bend on MSAT plasmoid energy. It should really be approximately tilde. It utilizes this slot. Like, this is just like the other times where it's kind of, I, I think I have that recording, although I did lose that one video, so I'm not sure what I said anymore that's recorded and, and posted and was lost to me talking into my muted microphone. Um, where he, like, tests the Schum, Schumann resident, resonance, the like keyword buzzwords things <clears throat> kind of reminiscent to the usage of this which just kind of shoves the perception in a certain direction 
like engines are at least worse than 34% by saying this. But then he's also saying, um, that he can capture it all, which makes no sense because there's heat loss right at the engine. Like it, all you need to do is put some, your hands above your car's hood and be like, I don't think something attached somewhere along this path is going to capture all this heat. Whilst, whilst improving efficiency by orders of magnitude. Tests performed on a working MSAT plasmoid energy engine prototype Hello. have proven the utility and efficiency of the engine, heralding the start of a new sustainable industrial revolution. And this is actually the transition into the revolution because the thing about plasmoids is so versatile and so predictable and so safe that we can actually easily, just by unbolting your exhaust pipe and bolting on our uh, plasmoid uh, charger, and then use the other side, unbolt the carburetor, put a space room with a vacuum tube, and put it back in. There's a oh my god, don't even. And four bolts for a small engine. And then that, that device will then generate plasmoids and water in its gas phase. And I must mention at this stage that those interested that this was part of a 1923 uh, using water along with fuel with the two fuel bowls was what was in a 1923 patent of the Model T Ford. So... What he showed us cannot be shrunk down and put on the exhaust that whatever exactly he's saying to do. Like, it cannot be placed there and is, like, kind of coupled to that system. When that thing was a... Like, what is happening in that device at that point? And basically, so this is heralding in. That's the. I mean, unless it's like materially, fundamentally, com completely different than what he just showed us in the last video, there's no way it's fitting on a car. People get familiar with the fact that plasmoids are very, very handy. At least, certainly not easily. That's for sure. He told me. Now we're just like, oh, dirt, dirt, dirt. <laughs> then it's easy to conceptualize going to the next phase, which is, you know, plasmoid, 100% plasmoid driven cars. And the next phase with our planetary power plant that you can phase out all that over a period of time. And also the plasmoids uh, oh my God. Uh, with the sim symbiotic effects that, or relationships they have with. Um, algae and uh, bacteria means that they can effectively directly translate crude oil into protein which means all the oil companies will make 10 times the money selling protein as they make currently selling fuel so the oil companies are happy the population of the earth is happy because they're now getting protein that protein can go more effectively is it more effective translation of energy because instead of having to translate you know, grains and things like corn and that to feed livestock to create protein or feed fish to create protein. It's a direct route to create protein without all that waste, you know, and uh, get away from all that uh, shitty business. So next. So this is um, section six, which will be our next slide. And this shows the uh, petrol retrofit of the plasmoid engine and also as we've discussed about the application with the internal combustion engine we've done test work on jet engines with kerosene we've done tests on uh, industrial engines with diesel and you know gas and also industrial engines with you know petrol and uh, wet gas like butane you know dry gas methane and butane uh, so, so basically, and also tests with, uh, which we'll show in these next oncoming sections, tests on um, using coal and wood-fired heat sources to recover the energy from them and uh, as a viable fuel and doubling the output of current coal uh, refineries overnight. 
So we can do this now and it solves all the world's problems overnight because every country will suddenly have no pollution and double the amount of power available to them. Uh, thank you. We'll, we'll all await the next slide, section six. Thank you. Oh. All right, so I'm out of here. Peace out. See you next one.